In this video, we're going to show how to read fault status and what the actual faults are from an Altivar 320 or an Altivar 630 from Schneider Electric into a Modicon Unity PLC. The first thing we need to do is pick a drive that has Ethernet. So in this case, we used a 320 drive. We have the same capability out of the 630 and 930 series. So once we put Ethernet in the drive and we go to the parameters of so move, we can go to the input output scanner table. You can see that the scanner table automatically picks two in and two out. So what we have here is we have a status register going back to the drive. And uh, if you read the manual, you'll actually see that the fourth bit or bit B3, because it starts at zero, B0123, uh, indicates the fault status of the drive in that bit. We're looking at actual speed. The other thing is we want to have the op code of the last fault. So we're going to add that. And if you look at the manual, we know it's parameter LFT, which is last fault, which will put a decimal value back into the PLC, which corresponds to a fault code for the drive. If we wanted to add something else, we can come here, look at the parameters, and we could look at uh, all different types of values inside the drive. You know, it's a... Uh, you can look at the current voltage, uh, current limits, anything inside of the drive. So right now we have three words going back to the drive, two words to the drive, which is the command and target velocity. And then you enable the scanner. We go into Unity. So inside of Unity Pro, we come here. And inside of Unity Pro, I've created a function block. And I'm going to take animation off on this function block so you can see what it is. And there's three pins in this function block. The one is we're going to look at the scan health of the transaction going Ethernet. And that's kind of important. It's really, really easy to configure that looking at uh, your scanner table from um, to, to going to the drive and to tell if it's healthy or not. And for example, we configured this transaction in Ethernet 2. IO scanning. So this is the configuration for the drive at that IP address. We know that we're actually writing two words to the drive and we are reading four. Now we're actually only reading three, but we gave it the ability to add another word in here to four. So uh, there is a word in the PLC that will tell the health of that transaction, whether it's healthy or not. And we will tie that health status to this input. So that input will go bad if the cable's disconnected, you have a bad switch, or if you lose power to the drive. So that's important to know uh, to alarm on in an HMI. Uh, so we also put the ETA here, and we know that inside this function block, we're gonna be looking at that fourth bit. And if that bit is high, or if the scan bit is low, we actually know we have a drive fault for some reason. And then uh, HMI or SCADA can enunciate an alarm or display that you have a fault from the drive for one of those two means. And if we have an ETA fault, now that we added the LFT, we can bring the last fault into the drive. If we have a fault, then we can actually display a fault message. So in this case, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put animation back on, and we can see that the drive scan is okay because we actually have a one right here, and we can show no fault inside the drive. If I turn this off, drive scan is bad, I'm going to show a drive fault because we lost our scanner, and I show an IO scan error. I'm going to put the scanner back on, so healthy Ethernet transaction. We now show no fault. And if I actually have an error, there are a bunch of errors inside of um, the function block that can be enunciated. So I'm going to come into here, my drive function blocks, into my sections that I created in the message selection. And these messages were copied out of a manual that Schneider provides, the ATV320 communication manual, and we put them into a case statement. So if the error code in there is a decimal zero, we know it's a no fault. If it's decimal nine, we know it's an overcurrent fault. Um, if it's uh, a breaking fault, a dynamic braking fault. We know it's an error 18, and it'll actually display that. So we actually put that inside the function block or there. So in this case, if I'm going to have a fault that I have scanning, typically what's going to happen is you're going to have a uh, 
error code. So I'll just force an 18 into here over a breaking fault. And if I put an eight, which is that third bit decimal in there, I can see that I get a drive fault because of that, and it shows over a breaking fault. And then what we need to do is tie that into uh, an HMI or SCADA. So I'm gonna clear this back to zero for the fault. Zero for the fault here. And I'm gonna show Blue Open Studio, go to the development. Uh, this will work with any HMI or SCADA. So in the HMI or SCADA, we're gonna have a digital in the driver sheet that I'm gonna read. And in this case, I just made it 0001. And then I'm gonna read the string message back. In this case, it's a string message swap bytes, uh, 30 characters long. And then I'm gonna add it to the alarm where I'm gonna look at the digital. If it's a one, it's an alarm. And I'm gonna display the message, drive one. And then in these brackets, it's that variable that actually shows the string message from the PLC, which shows the drive error. And then I created a screen, which has your alarm message, whether there's an error in the actual message from the drive here. So if I take a look at the actual online for the HMI, if I put control expert actually up next to it, I can come in here and I'll shrink this up a little bit so I can see both at the same time. Right now there's no fault. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. And so if I know that I'm gonna get a fault, I think it was 18 is one of the faults. You can see it's an overbreaking fault. And if this actually goes to a fault, uh, which is decimal eight, that goes to red. And I see in my alarm message, it's drive one overbreaking fault. If that fault goes away, that goes to green, I can acknowledge it. If, if I have an IO scan fault, I can actually see that I have an IO scan error. The IO scan error goes away. It goes to green. I acknowledge it. And if I have another error, I'll do the error code, let's say nine. And that bit comes on. You can actually see there's an overcurrent fault. So I, I created a function block for both the ATV320 and the ATV630 to take a look at the scanning as well as the ETA and LFT so that you can put it to an HMI. I will put a link to the comment section to this YouTube video in, uh, where you can download these function blocks. And uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Bye.